Well, again, thank you so much for joining with us today to be part of our impact series, to be part of the difference that God is seeking to make through His people. Because you're all wide awake here, now that you're here at the 10 o'clock service, we're going to start with a quiz. How, how sharp are our minds? Especially, this is an old movie quiz, all right? Uh, who was the famous actor who first spoke these lines? I could have had class. I could have been a contender. I could have been someone. What was it? Marlon Brando. Right. Remember that? From a 1954 classic, On the Waterfront. Marlon Brando, he played this uh, tough boxer, washed-up boxer, Terry Malloy. And later in his life, he, he was regretting some decisions he made. Earlier in his boxing career, he was asked by his brother to throw a match so that they could get some money. And now later, he's regretting that decision. He's remembering he could have been somebody if he would have just not walking, walked down that path. And now he's feeling like a bum. In fact, he says that's what he is. He's a bum. He's failed. He's not lived up to his potential that he always believed he had. Maybe there's a few of us here that maybe we felt a little like that at some point. You know, when we were younger, we, we believed we had potential. We believed there was so much we were going to accomplish. We were going to be contenders in this world. We, we were going to be somebody. And then life happened. <laughs> Obstacles happened. We made some choices, and we went this way or that, and now we're kind of regretting some of those decisions, and we wonder, can we ever be somebody? Can we ever be contenders again? Maybe we don't think of ourselves as bumps necessarily. In fact, most of us, we figured out a life. We, we made a life for ourselves. We made some differences. We, we carved it out. But still, there's a piece of us that says, did I miss out? Did I live up to my potential? And now that I'm getting older, is my significance dwindling? How can I live up to everything God has for me? How can I still be a contender how can I still be somebody? Well, I think the story we heard today is about that. As I said, we're working on this series called Impact. How God wants to use us to make a difference in this world. How he, He's given us a role to make a difference. And I think this story is meant as an encouragement to us. Those of us who want to be part of the solution, who still want to be contenders, who still want to be somebody, God is encouraging us to be a part of His plan. And that encouragement, it comes in the form of a word picture, what we would call a parable, drawn from the world of agriculture, the world of farming. It starts very simply in Luke, the eighth chapter, a simple verse that simply tells us that while a large car, a crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. And then later we hear, this seed is the Word of God. When farmers go out into their fields and plant seeds, they have an expectation, they have a hope that the seeds they plant will not stay as seeds. That something will happen, given the right environment, given the right care, uh, given the right circumstances, those seeds will grow and develop into something. They will put down roots. They will grow up into mature plants. They will produce fruit. And later, when Jesus is explaining this parable to his disciples, he says that that seed that the farmer plants, that's very much like the Word of God. Now, keep in mind that the Word of God in Scripture is a very powerful phrase. It's not like a collection of words or a collection of statements. No, in the Scriptures, Word of God means God is speaking. And when God speaks, amazing things happen. When God speaks, worlds are founded. Planets are created. Rivers are divided. The sun stands still. When God speaks, all of heaven and earth stand to attention. That's the power of God's Word. And what Jesus is saying here is that when He speaks, when His message is being spoken to this multitude, the powerful Word of God is carefully packed in to that message. That powerful 
Word of God with unlimited power, with unlimited potential. It's all wrapped inside of the seed that Jesus is speaking. This humble carpenter from Nazareth. He may not seem like much, but when he is speaking, he is speaking the Word of God. We may not recognize him. We may not believe him. We may not accept his word, but it doesn't change the fact that in his message is the unlimited power and possibilities and potential of the full power of God. And now he's sharing that word with these ears, with this crowd. He's sowing seeds out there among the people. And like a good farmer, he expects these seeds to do something, not stay as seeds. He expects expects this seed to somehow take root in people's lives, to change who they are, to grow them deeper and more mature so that they become fruit-bearing plants. The farmers are realistic. They know and understand that not every seed that they throw down there is going to produce fruit. It's just the way it works for all sorts of reasons. And Jesus... Jesus taps into this truth and he talks about the soil. He knows that as he spreads this word to the crowds that are out there, not every person who listens to it is going to be impacted by that word. Not every person is going to be changed. And to describe that phenomenon, he talks about soil. Three types of soil that, well, it will not have the impact. It will prevent the word from having the impact that it should have. The first type is hard soil, the kind of soil you find on a dirt path that a lot of people walk on. The idea there is that if seeds are placed on this kind of hard soil of a path, the birds are going to come along and snap it up before the plant can grow roots and grow and develop. And later when Jesus is explaining this parable to his disciples, he compares the devil to these birds. Uh, you hear a statement about Christ and it's picked up by the enemy before it can take root in a person's life. I think this strategy is still working. I hear it all the time all around me. People who know snippets about Jesus, they've heard about Jesus, they watched a movie about Jesus, they read a book about Jesus, they're... they're Relatives told them about Jesus. They know an interpretation of Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. They just know about him. They've never taken the time to really grow any deeper. They've moved on with life. The, the seed hasn't really taken shape yet. There, there's nothing really developed on that. Uh, they've been carried off by other things. I see it all the time. And I wonder, if only there were a place, a beautiful place, somewhere near the water, a beautiful place where people could come and spend time exploring their faith. And if only there were a group of people who were willing to bring somebody to that place where they could learn about Jesus and just sit and hear about His Word to experience changes that are happening, not just rumors about Jesus, but witness how Jesus is actually changing lives and making different lives. What if there were such a place? What if Rosa were that place? What if part of fruit making was inviting those folks who maybe grasp a seed here and there of the truth about Christ, if they were brought to a place where they could really meet Christ, and really hear the truth about Him, the Word that is there to minister to their souls. And then Jesus talks about a different kind of soil. He talks about rocky soil. Soil in which the water comes down, but then it quickly drains away. There's nothing really to help the plant develop roots. See, water is supposed to soften the pods so the roots can come out and begin to dig their way into the soil, begin to soak in the nutrients of the soil so that they can grow and become a mature plant. It starts off okay, but then it never really grows. It doesn't really develop the water is released kind of out of the plant's life. My last church, I had a young man once come to me and 
He had a problem in his life. He wanted to be delivered from that problem. He knew that Jesus was the answer. So he came to my office and we chatted for a while and I talked to him about the change that God wants to make in his life and the, this idea of listening to God, responding to God, that God would take you on this journey to help repair the problem, to reorient the way you think. And at the end of that conversation, he made the decision to follow Christ. So we said the prayer together, his decision to follow Christ, accept Christ, and began the new creature, life of learning how to be a new creature in Christ. And I tried to explain to him and let him know that this was going to take a while. In most cases, things don't change overnight, but I could tell he wasn't listening. And sure enough, a week later, I, I got a call from him. He wanted me to redo the prayer because <laughs> it didn't work. He hadn't been delivered yet. It didn't quite produce the change that he wanted. We chuckle, but the truth is most of us live our faith life that way. We believe God, we trust God, as long as He gives us the message we want to hear. As long as He gives us what we want, as long as He agrees with us, we'll listen to His Word. But as soon as it starts to not do what we want it to do, we start looking for other solutions, other answers, other sources. We don't give the Word enough time to really penetrate into our souls, to really challenge the way we think, to challenge how we view one another, to challenge how we view ourselves. We don't give the the word a chance to really impress us with the message of God, the power that wants to transform us, we jump out too early and miss the opportunity to grow. And then Jesus talks about thorny soil. It's where thorns grow up beside the plants, uh, weeds. And those thorns, they suck all the water. They suck all the nutrients. They take all the nutrients intended for the plant. The plant can't grow. It's its, its nutrients are choked out. And later when he's explaining this parable to the disciples, he explains this is like people who they receive the word, but then things start to choke out of it. They worries, struggling for pleasure, chasing after pleasure, chasing after wretches, and finding their own way to be, their own way to be a contender. And all this chasing and all this worrying, it sucks the life out of their faith. They spend so much time and energy and resources on all these other things. They don't have time to think about God's Word and what God's Word has to say. They don't spend time with God's transforming truth. They don't spend time with Christ. They get so distracted with all the things of life. It's like they're living on spiritual junk food <laughs> instead of the pure Word of God which can sustain their lives through the tough times. See, Jesus, when he's telling this story, he's being very realistic. He's talking to this crowd. He knows up front he's going to scatter the seed among these ears, but not everyone's going to listen. Some will kind of listen and move on with life. Others will try it for a while and give up if things get tough. Others will try it, but then they're going to let the things of life choke it out of them. He knows that. But he's going to sow the seed anyway. Because this is the powerful Word of God that can change everything. I wonder if we're listening. I, I wonder if we're ready to listen to the Word of God. I wonder if we're ready to take care of the problems that are around us. See, unlike the poor seed that gets thrown in the soil and has no choice, we're human beings. We can change our soil. We can change our soil. We, we can do something better. We have a choice. We can decide that we want better soil. We can start listening to Christ more. We can cut out some of the nonsense. And we can focus on His Word. We can spend time in His Word. Instead of worrying and chasing, we can spend time with other people in His Word. Not just to learn it like it's some sort of intellectual study, but to really understand it because Jesus is that Word. He wants to speak to us the powerful, life-giving words of God to us that will change us. That's what he has in store for us. And he asks the question, he who has ears, will you hear? 
Because if we will listen, and if we are willing to respond, then He's going to do a work. That powerful, world-changing Word of God will begin to take root in our lives and transform us. Look at how He brings that story to a close. He says, Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. And then he explains, but the seed on the good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. See, Jesus is saying, you can change your soil. It's very simple how you do that. If you want to change your soil, he says, start listening, start retraining, start obeying, living out this word. That's how you can change your soil. Are we willing to listen to the Word of God and be changed by it? You know, we started the story by looking at these 12. Uh, 12 men and other women that were along with them, and they were just as important part of the ministry. They, they had experienced God's delivering power. They had experienced change. They were supporting the ministry. They were co-ministering together. They were following Jesus. They didn't have all the answers. They didn't know all the truths. They weren't even trying to be somebody. They were just trying to figure it out. And they were following Jesus. They didn't have the answers, but they knew He had the answers. They knew He was the answer. They knew that He spoke for God, and they just wanted to know Him. In the Roman world at that time, they wouldn't have been seen as contenders. This small group, they wouldn't be seen as somebody's. Guess what? Over 2,000 years later, we're sitting here because of their faithfulness. We're an extension of their fruit producing work. We're still listening to Jesus. We're trying to retain his words. We're trying to learn his words and live his words. All because they made this decision to learn and follow Jesus to change their soil and be nourished by the life-giving Word of Jesus. So what's the point? We started off today a story about someone who regretted their life, wondered if they'd ever live up to their potential. We wondered if we'll ever live up to our potential. Will we experience everything God wants us to do and be? I hope what we've learned from this story is this very simple truth. That the more we are inspired by the Word of God, the more impact we will have. See, as we learn more about God and His Word and His power to change, as His instruction, His life-giving instruction, as we learn more about that and we, we seek to understand it and live it, as we do that, God will work through us to produce the change that He wants. He will build His kingdom through that. So we work to change our soil, but here's the thing. Then if we go out, we start scattering seed. We scatter it everywhere. We don't know. Just like those crowd on the hill. Jesus is talking to everybody. We go out, we tell everybody we know. Our family, our friends, people at the golf course, people at the store. One way or another, we have these conversations. We're seeking to live out His life, to obey Him. We, we try to bring up Christ in the conversations. We don't know. We're just... Scattering the seed wherever we can scatter the seed. That's our job. But what Jesus is promising us, He will create the fruit. We don't know whether they have ears to hear. We don't know that person, but Jesus will create the fruit. It's not our job to create the fruit. Not our job to multiply anything. People sometimes ask me as a pastor, are you concerned about growing your church? I said, nope. I'm not concerned at all. That's God's job to grow the church. My job is to be faithful and speak His Word. And share His Word and live His Word and encourage all of us. God will grow the church. That's His job. All we have to do is be faithful. That's the power of the Word of God. If it created worlds, it can grow a church. (laughs) We just have to be faithful. You know that movie on the waterfront... You can find it in an archive someday. You can go back and watch it. You have the pastor's position. 
uh, permission. Even some of you don't go back and look at old movies. You're allowed to do that. In that story, it's very interesting because Terry Malloy, he actually turns out to be an impactful person. At the end of the story, he reignites a relationship with an old flame, Edie, and she gives him inspiration to be the man he was always intended to be. And he fights back against the mob and actually testifies them against them and brings down the criminal world around him. He turns out to be a somebody that has an impact. He's not done. It made me wonder if any of us, if we rediscover Jesus, if we re inflame our relationship with him, our love relationship to the extent that we want to hear what he has to say, we want to learn from him, we want to put into practice his word. If we engage in that, what kind of difference can he make in our life? What kind of impact can we have? The world is filled with problems, huge problems, deep problems, but look around you, we are the solution. We are the solution that are promised victory if we are willing to immerse ourselves in the life-giving word of God himself. It's all there. So where do we go from here? Here's the challenge. Go plant a few good seeds this week. <laughs> Don't worry about where. Don't worry about to whom. Just go out there and, and do works of love. Do words of love. Just follow Christ's command to love God and love others uh, when possible and when appropriate. Bring up the subject of Christ and bring them to this place <laughs> where they can explore their faith. Let's watch God produce Many times over, increase, produce fruit. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this group of people that are assembled to do just that, to hear the word of God. Now just help us change our soil so that word, it takes root. So it challenges us and grows us. It gives us that good and pure heart that God wants to work in to shape and change so that we can have an impact on this world around us. And we ask this in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.